A new beta is revealed as well as more info about the dungeons, the paragon board and glyphs and endgame. Let's do a recap of all the new information from the new developer update. So the big reveal was that there will be a surprise third beta starting on May 12th and ending on May 14th. Still with just the prologue and act 1 and the level cap will be 20 this time instead of 25 but there will be rewards for getting to level 20 on a character and beating the world boss including two titles, a beta wolf pack cosmetic and an Avasha mount trophy. This beta will also feature all the class changes announced so far with big changes to pretty much every class especially for druid and barbarian which felt quite underpowered compared to the other classes and nerfs to necromancer and sorcerer as well as UI changes and more. Legendary drop rates are the release levels, so they won't be boosted to have more legendary drops this time. The game will be much more optimized for PC players and DLSS 3 will also be available for Nvidia users, as well as more settings that weren't in the previous betas. Higher world tier difficulties will have better item rewards, world tier 3 will have sacred items and world tier 4 will have ancestral items. Legendary powers are attached to legendary items, each appears on specific slots, Powers are intended to get you excited about interactions with your build and there are extremely rare unique items at the Sacred and Ancestral gear level. Some of those will be items from past Diablo games too. World tiers aren't just more health and more damage, new mechanics, AI and abilities are unlocked to enemies as well. The world feels more hostile and aggressive and players will need to complete capstone dungeons in order to gain access to higher world tiers. About Helltide, those will be targeted farm activities, special events that happen around the map, Sky turns red, blood rains, new monsters and events pop up. Cinders can be collected during the event. Helltide caches in these areas have specific costs and drop specific items. If you die you lose half of your cinders, so there's a risk element to these areas too. Helltide will only be active for about an hour and this rotates through sanctuary and cinders must be spent before the Helltide expires. Nightmare dungeons are the key replay mechanic of the endgame. Nightmare Sigils can be used to open up portals near a side dungeon. Nightmare Sigils make dungeons have afflictions and greater afflictions. Non-native monsters can be added to the dungeons. And those will make dungeons harder like Mythic Plus dungeons in WoW with certain new mechanics and elements added to them. More and more Sigils are unlocked as you play with increasing difficulty. Great places to farm for sacred ancestral items and to upgrade Paragon Glyphs. And they are fixing the dungeons so they won't feel too repetitive and to fix all the backtracking complaints people had. So we won't need to run around that much anymore and have a better pattern to clear the dungeon without needing to go back and forth too much or to miss potential enemies or key items to progress the dungeon, so that's cool. The Paragon Glyphs are upgraded at the end of Nightmare Dungeons and socket into your Paragon board. Those are very powerful, on the level of some of the best upgrades for your build. Better than legendary powers, and we've seen more info about the Paragon board too and its potential powers with different kinds of nodes that all seem quite interesting. Paragon boards have four types of nodes. The normal ones that are the most basic ones that just increase your stats mostly, magic ones with different affixes, rare ones with powerful effects plus bonus if you meet requirements making off stats potentially very useful, and legendary. Those are very powerful but not the most powerful. The most powerful are the ones for the Paragon glyphs that you need to work towards and those Paragon Glyphs are boosted by nearby nodes and boost nearby nodes. And the higher a Glyph is, the bigger the radius it has. And since boards can be turned around, you may find that your path is very different from other players. 220 Paragon points at level 100, and respects are possible, but they do cost a lot, so it's going to be hard to respect and costly. They noticed that the Barbarian and Druid felt weak, they saw Barbarian needed more damage reduction, particularly at lower levels, because they have to get up close, and the elements of the Druid needs buffs. Boss attack patterns felt ridiculous to melee, so they adjusted that too. They fixed some attacks patterns because of this. This ties into Necrominions, they also die more now. All monster kill objectives now route enemies towards you at low enemy counts. Anima and the like give back resources or movement speed boosts to make you progress further. And those last enemies are no longer a pain in the ass to hunt down. Nightmare dungeons will also have rotations, considering they are the main endgame activity and that there will be over a hundred of them. Each season will have a rotation of different dungeons. They want to take a subset of the 150 or so dungeons with a number of those rotating each season, so they are highlighting different kinds of objectives, layouts, monster families and experiences. The skill trees will get expanded over time with more skills and nodes as part of expansions. The Altars of Lilith will work between seasons, they offer stats and renown. The renown resets but the stats do not, so it's not necessary to collect them all every season, 
as there's a surplus of renown, so you can complete that without collecting all the altars every season. When asked again about an overlay map, they said that the overlay is a very effective and that it's usually too effective. People keep it up all the time, so they don't look at the game, they just look at the map and they don't see the game and the combat. So they don't want that to distract players' attention from the game and just stare at an overlay. There will not be an overlay at launch, but they're saying they are considering post-launch if a lot of people ask for it. There will be no co-op on PC on Battle.net and no WASD movement at launch, but might be added later if people want it. Ray tracing will also be added post-launch, the crafting system will evolve in time and you can pick up materials from the ground while mounted. For players that don't want to play Season and play on the Eternal Realms where there are no resets, they will be adding rich and interesting content updates for seasonal players, but they'll also make balance changes and adding new legendary unique items and things for players who are playing on the Eternal Realms too, so people that don't want to play Season can still look forward to more updates in time. And that's about it from this update, quite a lot of interesting new info we found about here. We'll learn more in the next one in early May that will be more about seasonal structure and battle passes. Let me know what you think about the changes and thanks for watching.